Hi, in this video we're going to look at a variety of Excel functions for the bond markets and we're going to try and understand uh, how those functions work. Right now to understand this let's uh, take data for a particular bond which is available. Let's assume there's this bond whose uh, settlement date we have taken as uh, the date today. Uh, this is the market price at which the bond is trading that's rupees 992 face value is 1000 now right what is the coupon coupon is 11 percent and the maturity date is basically the date in December of 2020 so it's about three and a half years plus a few months from now what is the frequency so this is a semi annual bond which basically means it's going to pay a coupon of 5.5 each of the years and uh, based on that give us the calculation of the data that uh, that we're looking for and give us the price and everything so there are two ways we can solve for this one of the ways is I put in the date today and then put in the next coupon date and the next coupon date and calculate what's going to be the the value there so I can probably put in for example if this is 23rd of March 23rd of uh, December 2020 I can say the next date is 23 December 2017 and 23 let's say June 2017 and then so on and so forth so I can do 23 June 2018 let me remove this and then 23 December 2018 23 June 2019 23 December 2019 23 June 2020 and then the final date which is 23 December 2020 so I can take the same format and freeze this so I go to this and take the format and move to the next row and put it there right now one of the things I can do is I can just put in 5.5 or 55 and 55 and that's going to be the broad set of coupons which are left and the final payment would be 1055 correct because 555 because that's five and a half percent so that's the broad timeline on what the coupons would look like I can try and find out how many days are left in this which is essentially this minus the date today and I can divide it by the number of days in the period so that's let's say 182 2 is what I take so I can divide this by how many days are left in the period and I can then just keep adding the periods to that right so I can just keep adding 1 to this and then keep doing this for the rest of the period as well right so that's basically how I structure a bond and these are the number of periods left and I can now try and calculate based on the current market price what is going to be the yield or based on the yield what is going to be the current market price correct I can do that now while this is useful this is a long drawn process it takes a lot of time to really do it and as long as I can visualize this well I can practically use a set of functions and arrive at the data right so what do I need to find out I need to find out how many days are left to the next coupon how many days are probably there in the coupon period and how many days have passed so far in the coupon period right for this Excel gives us some interesting functions so I can use a function called coup days right that's a function called coup days and if we open what's the what's the data in this so you have a settlement date which is the date on which the trade is happening right the maturity date which is here the frequency which is semi-annual and the basis in which we will use one we will use one because it's actual by actual right 
and click on OK. Correct? So basis, we're going to use one, which is actual by actual. And when I use one, it says 182 days in the period are there, right? Now, how many days are over? How many days are over? I can find that using a function called coop days, you know, you know, beyond, you know, from the beginning to the settlement. So that's why coop days BS, beginning to the settlement. How many days are over? And once again, the function takes the same set of arguments. It takes the settlement date. It takes the maturity date. It takes the frequency. It calculates the basis and puts it there. And we find 70 days have passed, right? What's the difference? The difference is 112. The difference is 112. So out of 182 days, 70 days have passed and one in 112 days are left. Can I calculate the accrued interest for this period, right? So what's the period that's available? That's 70 divided by 182 multiplied by 55 rupees because for the entire period I'm going to get 55. So I can take 11% into 1000 or 11% 11 by 2. 11% by 2 into the face value right so 21 rupees worth of interest has been accrued already right 21 rupees worth of interest has been accrued already which should then give me what is the clean price correct can I find the clean price the current market price is 992 and that should be the dirty price remember that includes the accrued interest so the clean price should be 992 minus 21.15. So that's my clean price. 970.85 should be the clean price. Correct? Now, there are a few more interesting uh, functions on coupon which are available. And that's like how many days are left in the coupon period. We can calculate it as 182 minus 70, 112. We can also do it as a function called coop days NC, right? Number of days till settlement. And once again, it takes the same arguments. It takes maturity date and settlement date, and it takes frequency, and it takes basis. And I click on OK, and it says 112, right? Which is what we had started with, 112 is the number we had calculated otherwise as well. So the 112 days are left. Excel also gives us functionality to find out the exact next coupon date as well. So I can do coup, coup NCD, the next coupon date, right? It returns the next coupon after the settlement date. So what is the settlement date? That's this. What is the maturity date? That's this. What's the frequency? It's two semi-annual. Basis is one. Enter. It gives me the data in number format because Excel stores dates in number formats. I can format it and put it here and that's 23 June 2017, right? What is the number of coupons left till maturity? So if I just type coop, it'll give me all the functions that are there. So coop num is the number of coupon payments payable between the settlement date and maturity date. And once again, I can take the settlement date as today, maturity date as December, frequency is two, basis is one, enter. And I see eight coupons are left. How many coupons are left? Eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The last one is one zero five five. That's coupon plus the face value. Correct. I can also find what was the previous coupon date. So there is a function called coup PCD, which is previous coupon date. Coup PCD, which is previous coupon date. And same arguments. Right. So date today. Settlement date, frequency, which is two, and basis, which is one. And I can then get 
format of painter and do this and that gives me 23rd of December 2016 23rd of December 2016 for our calculation right so effectively we have done the same calculations but we have found the data using all this right now can I calculate the yield in this function right so far either I can calculate the yield based on the price being put in this equation and then calculate the yield as the IRR calculation or uh, 1 by R uh, in 1 plus R in that formula or Excel allows me to calculate a yield function as well so I can take the yield sorry and open the brackets and settlement date that's this same set of functions that if you remember we put in the price uh, data then uh, maturity date sorry that's going to come here that's the maturity date what is the rate annual coupon rate 11 percent what's the price now remember price is per hundred dollars face value here we are assuming the price is on thousand dollars face value remember so we have to be careful that we are using the price based on uh, hundred dollars so we're going to use whatever the price is and divide that by 10 why because we are using a face value of 1000 also remember we'll use the clean price so clean price divided by 10 what you see here is 97.08 so that's basically the price per hundred dollar of face value that we're looking at right then redemption is the securities redemption value per hundred dollar face value so that's this by 10 right and then the frequency is 2 and the basis is 1 correct frequency is 2 and the basis is 1 and that should give us the yield of this particular security which is 11.96 percent so that's the yield that we get in this particular question so that's the yield that we find and this is remember the annual yield so the semi annual yield would be half of this essentially once you use that you can basically find all the questions all the data points that are there so as the date changes automatically everything else changes if I change the date to today you know plus five for example then all the other data points would change accordingly and the yield would change accordingly if I change the date only to today then we get this data right so I started with today minus one if I change the date to today then what we get is all this set of data right the numbers could obviously be different I can I can hard code this and let's say we are saying uh, we are saying this is on the 28th of February 2028 February 2017 and 67 days have passed accrued interest is lower the yield obviously goes down a little bit in that context from what we had calculated earlier the number of days left in the period are 115 and uh, that's all the data that is there everything else remains more or less the same right so that's basically how we solve using all the major functions. I'll just reiterate the function scoop days gives us the number of, so I'll write it here, coop days, coop days BS, that's the function here, sorry, coop day BS, that's the function here. Then accrued interest can be found out. This is scoop days NC, so This is the number of the next coupon date, so coup NCD. Then we have the number of coupons left is coup num. And previous coupon date is coup PCD. Right, those are the functions that we see here. The yield function gives me the yield here. And just to be sure of what the price function gives us, I can use the price function here open the brackets and use the yield now to calculate the price and let's see what that gives so settlement date then we look at maturity date 
we look at the rate which is the coupon rate we look at the yield we just calculated the redemption value is 1000 divided by 10 so that's 100 right whatever is the redemption value frequency is 2 basis is 1 and you click on this and you see the value you get 97.175 you multiply this number this number has to be multiplied by 10 and we get the data exactly the same price and that's the clean price that the price function calculates remember we had discussed this earlier that the price function calculates the clean price but that just tells us the yield we calculated is correct but we have to use the clean price in this calculation and we have to convert the bond prices to hundred dollars or hundred rupee face value bonds we can't use the direct data here because that will give distorted results right that's basically everything that's there in these functions so these are the five or six functions that we have looked at or understood in this particular video that's it in this particular section on advanced financial modeling thank you